Okay, so some of you earned uh, bonus points, as I mentioned. A few of you did, so uh, you'll see that in, on your score. That's in the grade book. The, uh, the grade book uh, in um, uh, my math lab is, is currently pretty much up to date. So what you see is your, I um, forgot what it calls it in my math lab, your overall score or something like that um, is pretty much uh, uh, accurate as of uh, right now, okay, uh, with this first test uh, inserted. Okay, now, um, so uh, the good news is that... Um, Almost everyone um, is uh, doing the homework and is doing well on the homework. So I've got good grades on the homework. Uh, so that's really important. That did not always uh, translate, though, into a, um, a really uh, a good test score. Okay. So what that likely indicates is that um, your test preparation was not adequate for many of you. All right. And that often is an issue. Uh, for freshman college students is um, uh, 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 sort of coming uh, uh, to the realization or accepting the fact that that your test preparation has to be a lot more intense than and, and purposeful than you may uh, have been used to okay uh, in high school all right so um, so so that's something that we've got to work on uh, for test number two is being more purposeful in uh, uh, in uh, preparing for the test okay so for some of you that may mean preparing for the test right because for some of you may not have spent very much time or little time preparing for the test so that's obviously not going to work uh, if you did prepare uh, some for the test then uh, 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 then probably going to have to prepare more for the test right so um so we're going to talk about um uh, uh, i'm going to talk a little bit more about the test um uh, after the lecture, all right, and uh, and and what steps we can take to maybe um, uh, get a better grade on test number two, okay? Uh, but uh, but what is uh, uh, helping you is your um, homework average is high, okay, pretty high. Uh, in some cases, it could be uh, higher, but it's pretty high. So that's um, uh, 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 that's propping your grade up, right? So. Um, I don't think for many of you, uh, maybe a few of you, it's not an there's not an emergency situation. It's just that um, we have to do better on uh, uh, test number two, okay? Uh, when test number two comes around, all right. Uh, so you want to continue doing well in your homework, and of course, uh, continue attending class, okay? So class attendance has also been good. So we want to continue that. Um, uh, we want to continue that uh, as well. Um, now, for a few of you, not many of you, but for a few of you. Um, um, uh, I am. I your grades are low enough that I think it may help you to talk to an advisor about uh, what you can do. Uh, uh, and so I have uh, to improve your tests, to improve your scores, right? Because it may be not just this class that you're having issues with, but it may be other classes as well. So, uh, 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 so uh, for some of you, you may have an advisor call you, all right, or email you, contact you. Uh, about this class, and they're simply going to uh, discuss with you uh, what strategies uh, you might uh, uh, employ uh, beyond what I mentioned here in class uh, so that um, you can get your uh, grades up, okay? Uh, and they may also want to talk with you about what's happening in your other freshman uh, classes, right, okay? So, um, so be aware of that, all right? Um, um, <clears throat> okay. Um, Let's keep that. All right. So again, I'll say more about the test um, uh, after the um, after the lecture today. Um, all right. So um, the um, uh, here's the homework list. Uh, it looks like we have a little bit of time uh, between this homework and this homework. So the way I've got them scheduled. So I'm gonna uh, since we're still talking about some things on this homework, I'm gonna slightly postpone this one uh, uh, to Wednesday. Okay, because uh, we still have time. Um, uh, so I'm going to uh, postpone that due date to Wednesday. Um, and so this is the list that we have posted at the moment, okay? But I'm um, uh, going to start adding to this uh, pretty quickly, okay, uh, uh, more uh, assignments. Um, so, but be working on that, um, be working on that homework, right? Even though I'm postponing it, go ahead and uh, be working on that. We're not going to work on that today in class, okay? We have another uh, activity that we're going to do um, 
uh, in class today, okay, uh, after, the, uh, after the lecture. All right, so do you all have any uh, uh, questions, not specific questions about your own test, although I'll be happy to answer those, okay? Um, uh, uh, so after the lecture, uh, uh, I can talk about uh, if you have specific questions about how your test was graded, okay? Uh, but just general questions uh, or uh, questions on homework problems or other sorts of questions about uh, things that we're doing here. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Well, someone might. No? All right. Um, okay. Um, all right. Um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and, and just uh, launch right into the launch right into the lecture and try to get uh, uh, as much of that done before we uh, stop. And, um, uh, and again, as I promised there, talk a little bit more about uh, the test. And then um, um, we have an activity to do um, uh, after class today. Okay. Um, all right, so we've been talking about uh, linear functions, straight lines, and uh, so this is an important topic, so we spend a lot of time with it. Um, and so we're going to talk about it for, uh, actually, for a while here. Um, and we've already introduced the uh, 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 basic ideas, right, okay, um, which are encapsulated in these, um, uh, in these three properties of linear functions. Uh, that we've already discussed now twice, right? Okay. So um, for linear functions, right? Remember uh, your um, your um, uh, 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 the uh, formula for a linear function can be written in this format, but doesn't have to be written in this format. So um, uh, if you see a, a, a function's formula who fits uh, whose uh, a, a formula fits this format, right? Then that's going to be a linear function. Um, uh, the graph of a linear function is a straight line, okay? So that seems kind of obvious, right? Okay, graph of a linear function is a straight line. And then this third uh, uh, really a, a crucial property that often helps us apply linear functions in practice, right, which uh, uh, talks about how uh, 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 outputs change uh, in a linear function, right? Okay, so remember for a linear function, when the inputs uh, 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 increase by a steady amount, the outputs will change could be increase or decrease, right? Also by a steady amount, right? And um, the amount of change in the output uh, uh, when the uh, 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 input increases by exactly one unit, that's called the slope or uh, uh, also the rate of change, okay, for that uh, uh, linear function, right? So uh, 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 again, that's the amount of change when the uh, uh, input increases by exactly one unit, right? The change in the y value is called the slope of that uh, linear function. And, and that number turns out to be a, a, a key uh, in many cases for helping us apply uh, linear functions in practice. So that's why we, uh, 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 we kind of dwell on uh, uh, that definition um, a lot. All right, so uh, before the test, uh, we were just looking at examples of linear functions. So remember, in this example, we had a bunch of tables uh, of, um, uh, of functions, and we were uh, just uh, trying to determine if those were linear functions or not. That was pretty easy to do, right? Okay. Uh, again, by considering the uh, uh, change, right, in the input and the output, and uh, when the uh, uh, input increases by a steady amount, right, if the output also changes by a steady amount, then we know we've got a, um, we know we have a linear function, right? For this particular table, right, here, the inputs were always increasing by 1, and the outputs were always changing by minus 3, right? The outputs were always decreasing by 3, so we knew this was a linear function, right? Um, its slope is minus 3, because that was the steady change in the output when the input increased by uh, exactly uh, one unit, okay? All right, let's look at some linear functions, though, now, not in the form of, uh, 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 not in the form of tables, but in the, uh, uh, but as formulas, okay? So um, these are all formulas for uh, linear functions because they can all be put into that um, uh, mx plus b format, right? Okay, so you can, uh, if they're not already written in this format, you can rewrite all of these um, 
uh, 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 function formulas in this style, okay, and when you can do that, uh, that means you know you've got a uh, uh, linear function. Uh, so uh, uh, what we want to do in this example is just make a graph of these linear functions. So we already know these are linear functions because they uh, we can f fit them into this format. Uh, let's see what the graph is going to look like. And of course, obviously, right, the graph is going to turn out to be a what? Yeah, it's a linear function, so the graph will be what sort of curve? A straight line, right, okay? So uh, so these are, uh, uh, linear functions are very easy to graph, right? Because their uh, their graphs are so simple, right? Uh, when you graph a linear function, uh, you're just going to get a, uh, just going to get a straight line, right? So that means you don't have to plot a lot of points uh, 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 when you're uh, trying to graph a linear function because you know what the picture is going to look like, right? So uh, for this first example, A, okay, um, Let's just plot um, a few points, okay, and um, that'll be enough for us to make a nice picture of this uh, linear function. So, uh, uh, by the way, uh, 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 you uh, uh, should also be able, uh, and so you'll be asked to do this on a test, um, uh, to graph a linear function by hand because it's a very easy chore, all right? It's not difficult to graph linear functions by hand. Uh, many of the functions that we're going to be working in the, in the class are not going to be easy to graph by hand, so we won't try to graph them by hand. We'll use a, 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 a technology to help us with that. But for linear functions, for the most part, uh, uh, these you can graph uh, by hand, okay? So for this first one, uh, 3x minus 5, right, okay? Um, Let's just uh, 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 find some points on the graph of this function just by plugging in some values for x, right, and finding the matching y value. And, you know, we can use any uh, points we want for x, right, or any numbers we want for x. Uh, let's start with, for instance, um, I'm going to start with a negative number there. Um, let's try minus 1, okay? And um, so to find the matching y value, right, you're just going to evaluate um, f of minus 1. So that's going to be uh, 3 times a minus 1 minus 5, right? And that, I think, is minus 8, correct? So you know this point, minus 1 minus 8, um, is going to be on the graph of the function. All right, let's try another x value here. Normally, I would... Um, Normally, I would try to separate my x values by a little bit more than one, okay? A little bit more than one, but I'm, the, uh, the reason I'm not in this instance is I'm going to try to demonstrate something here. All right, so let's just go up to zero, okay? Usually, I would try to go up a little bit more than that just to give some distance between these x values. But, uh, uh, so f of zero, of course, that's easy, right, uh, to evaluate. And uh, it's just going to come out to be minus 5, right? And what do we know about that number minus 5? That uh, number has a special significance uh, uh, for this uh, linear function. What's that number called? That's the y-intercept, right? Yeah, that's where uh, uh, this graph is going to cross the y-axis. Remember, the b value in a linear function formula um, uh, is always the y-intercept, right? Here, the m value is uh, 3, and the b value is uh, minus 5, correct? And uh, so our y-intercept is uh, minus 5. Let's try 1. So uh, f of 1, easy to calculate that, too, right? That's 3 times 1 minus 5, which is uh, negative 2. So there's three points there. Uh, there's three points there um, um, on the graph, okay? So let's see... Um, <clears throat> minus 1, when we plug minus 1 in here, we're supposed to get what? Minus 8. So there's minus 1 all the way down here at minus 8, I guess, is right there. Okay, so there's a point. And then 0 and minus 5, that's the y-intercept, right? Okay, um, that's the y-intercept. And, um, and then 1 and what was it? Negative 2 right there. And... Um, that's really enough, I think, to draw the graph, right? Actually, two points would be enough to draw the graph because there's only um, uh, uh, one line that connects any two points. That's a, a, an axiom of geometry. But with three points, we can really especially uh, uh, see the line here, right? So let's just connect those. Uh, let's just connect all those points with a nice uh, straight line there, okay? Ah, so um, there's my graph, all right? Um, that's what that graph is going to look like. 
All right. Um, now, because of the way I uh, here's why I was uh, kind of setting up this uh, uh, this uh, uh, table of input output values the way I did. Uh, notice uh, in this uh, instance, I separated all the x values by exactly one, right? Okay. So notice in this table, uh, x is always increasing by one, right? Here, uh, the change from minus one to zero is one. And uh, the change from 0 to 1 is, of course, also 1, right? So from this table, we can also figure out what the slope for this line is. Because remember, the slope is the change in the y values, right, when the x values increase by exactly 1, OK? When the x values increase by exactly 1. So how are these y values changing when um, x is increasing by uh, 1 there? Let's see, we went from what? This was negative 8 to what? Um, negative 5 and not minus 5 to minus 2. So what are those changes there? By 3, right, OK? So uh, notice that the, uh, when x changes by, when x increases by 1, the y is changing by positive 3. And that is the definition of the slope. So the slope for this line turns out to be uh, 3. And um, that's kind of interesting because notice that's the same as this coefficient of the x, right? And that's no accident. Um, that coefficient of the x there will always be the same as the slope of the will always be the same as the slope of a line. So when you have a, a, a formula for a line given, it's easy to determine what the slope is, right? You just put it into this format and read off the coefficient of the x, and that's going to tell you the slope of the that's going to tell you the slope of the line. This is only one example of that, but that's going to be true in uh, every case. Okay? So, uh, uh, so uh, well, here's uh, uh, two ways, right, of seeing that the slope of the line is three, right? We read it off of this table, but now we know that we can also get that from the coefficient of the x when the line is written in this uh, format. Okay? Um, so this mx plus b format has a special name. Um, this is called slope intercept form. Um, and obviously, it's called that because um, when a line is written in this um, style, you can read off the slope and you can read off the uh, y-intercept, right? Okay? It's easy to determine those two values. Let me show you now another way, uh, since we know now that the slope is 3, let me show you another way we could have graphed this line, okay? Uh, other than just building this table of values, okay? Let me show you another way we could have graphed the line. All right, so look, um, we already know from looking at uh, uh, this formula, what's the y-intercept? Negative 5, right, okay? So you already know this point is going to be on the graph without having to make out the table, right? You know minus 5 is going to be out on the graph. But you also know the slope is 3. And remember, what does the slope tell you? That tells you how the y changes when x increases by 1. So starting from this point, for, yeah, starting from this point, if you increase x by 1, increase x by 1, right, then the y value has to change by 3. So starting from this point, you can increase x by 1 and then change the y, increase the y by 3, and that will give you another point on the line. So notice that brings us to this point, right? Okay. So there's your second point on the line. And you can keep uh, playing that game. So another point on the line would be increase x again and then again go up by 3. So there's another point on the line. Or again, increase, increase x by 1 and go up by 3. So there's yet another point on the line. So you can keep stepping up like that to get more points on the, to get more points on the line. So there's another way of making the graph. You can make the graph that way by using the slope and the y-intercept without having to you know, really uh, uh, plug in uh, these values into the formula. Okay. Let's try the second one. See if I. All right. So uh, five minus uh, uh, three x over two. So when you first look at that, right, you might think. Uh, I think we discussed this earlier, right? You might think, oh, this is not even a straight line, okay? Because uh, the formula doesn't look like m x plus b. But you can rewrite the formula in m x plus b form, right? By breaking this fraction into two fractions. So 
uh, 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 divide 5 by 2, that's 5 halves, and divide the minus 3x by 2, that's minus uh, 3 halves x, okay? And that's the same formula, uh, just written in a slightly different form, right? And when you see it written like this, then uh, it's much more obvious, right, that that is a uh, straight line, right? What's the y-intercept there? Yeah, so the b value is 5 halves. That's the y-intercept. And what's the slope here? The m. That's minus 3 halves, okay? That's minus 3 halves. So we can use those two numbers to... Uh, we can use those two numbers to uh, construct the graph, or if we like, we can build a table, okay, and just plug in different values for x, right, find the matching y value, and plot uh, those points. Let's see if we can use the slope and the y-intercept. These are fractions, so these are a little bit messier, okay, um, uh, 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 these are a little bit messier to use, but uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can uh, figure out what this looks like. I got to use the same... Uh, I got to use the same um, uh, set of axes, though, so I hope I can fit this in here. So let's see. Uh, the y-intercept is what? Yeah, it's positive uh, 5 halves, right? So the y-intercept is right there at 5 halves, so it crosses the y-axis at um, 5 halves. And now let's see if we can uh, use that slope to get another point. It's not as easy here because the slope is a fraction. But let's see if we can use that, um, uh, uh, that slope to get another point. So starting from this point, again, what does the slope tell you? It says when x increases by 1, the y value is going to decrease by decrease, right? Because this is negative. So the y value is going to decrease by what? 3 halves, right? Okay. So we started right there at 5 halves. So I'm going to increase the x by 1. I'm going to increase the x by 1. So that takes me a little bit to the right here, right? And then I'm going to go down three halves. Where would that put me at? Right here? Is that right? Down three halves? Three halves is one and a half, correct? Okay. So you're going to go to five halves down to two halves, right? Five halves down to two halves is a loss of three halves, right? A decrease of three halves. Two halves, of course, is one. So you're right there at one on the... Um, right there at 1 on the y-axis. So there's our second point. Let's get a third point. It really is getting messy here now, right? Okay, because uh, I'm running into my other line. But let's see. I'm going to increase x by 1, and then I'm going to go down by 3 halves. Where would that put me? Right here? Put me right there, okay? You're going from 1 down to by, down by 3 halves. So that would put you at minus 1 half right here, okay? Uh, you want another point? Increase x by 1, go down another 3 halves, that brings you to this point. See how all those uh, uh, points line up perfectly on a line, right? Okay? Um, and now just connect all those points. Ah, yay, okay? So uh, there's our second line. Let's see. This first line had slope 3. This second line has slope minus uh, 3 halves, okay? Ah, so there's a nice graph. What about E here? Uh, th well, this is E from above, from that previous example. Um, F of X equals minus 5. So that also is a linear function, all right? Again, that's one that can kind of fool you, right? Because when you look at that formula, you might think, uh, not a linear function because it doesn't fit this format. But we can write it in this format. Uh, you have to cheat a little bit um, to write it in that mx plus b format. You have to give the x a coefficient of 0. So you write this as 0 times x, which of course is 0, and then uh, minus 5. 0 times x minus 5 is the same as minus 5. So uh, that is a linear function. Um, Kind of an unusual linear function, but that's a linear function. What's the slope there? So what's the m value? What? No, not negative 5, but what? 0, right. And the b value is the y-intercept. That is minus 5, okay? 
So um, when you graph uh, this very simple formula, it is a linear function. So the graph is going to be a straight line. Okay, it's going to have the same y-intercept as our first graph did. So it's going to cross the y-axis there at uh, minus five, right? Okay, but the slope is telling you that uh, uh, telling you something very unusual, right? When you increase x by one, how much is the y changing? Zero. So when we increase x by one, here I'm going to increase x by one, starting at minus five, the the y doesn't change. So the next point on this graph is going to be same place, right, on the y-axis. And then you can just keep going, right? Increase x by one, the y value doesn't change. Increase x by one, y value doesn't change. So what kind of line do you get here? Yeah, all lines are straight, but horizontal right, okay, yeah, you get a horizontal line out of this right, okay, perfectly flat line uh, like this. This type of function where you just have, uh, I mentioned this before, where your formula is just a number, like minus 5 is just a number, those functions are called constant functions because the output is always constant. No matter what input you use, you always get the same output here. You always get the same y value here, uh, minus 5, okay? So uh, pretty clear uh, where the terminology constant function comes from, right? The output is constant. Um, so this horizontal line has slope um, 0, okay? One thing we, uh, one thing we noticed from uh, this example um, is uh, we get a little information here from this example about what happens when you have slopes with different signs, right? So if you have a, 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 a line with slope 0, that means that's a constant function. So that's going to be a flat line, perfectly horizontal line. But if you have a, a, a line with negative slope, like this second example had negative slope, right? Negative 3 halves was the slope. That line is going to be decreasing from left to right, okay? So it's always going down from left to right because the outputs are going down, right? The outputs are uh, uh, decreasing when the inputs go up. So uh, uh, lines with negative slope go down from left to right. This line has slope 3, however, and you, when you have lines with positive slope, those lines are going to be increasing from left to right because the, uh, 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 the output is increasing, right, when x goes up by 1. So positive slope, that always gives you an increasing line. Negative slope, that gives you a decreasing line. And then 0 is either positive or negative, but uh, lines with 0 slope turn out to be uh, perfectly flat, all right? Well, that all seems kind of obvious, but that sometimes helps you when you're trying to graph a straight line. Um, uh, 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 if you uh, graph a line with uh, negative slope and you get a graph that's going up from left to right, you know you've done something wrong, right? Or vice versa. If you're graphing a line with negative slope and you get a, a graph that's going up from left to right, then um, you got to recheck your work, right? Uh, you know you've done something wrong in that case. All right, so you see we want to continue our tradition here of um, uh, working with functions in different forms. So sometimes we'll have uh, functions expressed as formulas, but oftentimes we'll have functions expressed as um, uh, graphs. And it's really our goal here to be able to convert back and forth between these two representations. So if we have a formula, we want to be able to make the graph. That's what we did in that previous example. But we also want to be able to work backwards. So here we've got a graph, and we want to see if we can write down the formula. Okay? So we, can we convert that? Um, uh, can we convert that graph to a formula? Notice I'm leaving out table because uh, we just don't work with uh, graphs expressed as tables as much as we do formulas and uh, graphs. Okay? Uh, but uh, uh, but we we shouldn't ignore them completely. All right? Functions can also be expressed as uh, tables. All right, so uh, so what is this um, what does this graph purport to show here? All right, so well it says uh, a prepaid a smartphone has the following uh, 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 pricing plan. All right, so X is the uh, amount of cellular da data used measured, I guess, in 
gigabytes, right? Isn't that how they measure that? And then um, uh, X there, uh, Y there, I'm sorry, is going to be the monthly cost, right? Okay. So the purpose of the uh, a graph there, right, is to uh, you know figure out what the cost is, right, for using a certain amount of cellular data, right, uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, plan, right? So our input here is the amount of cellular data that we're using, and then the output there is the uh, is the cost, right? The, the monthly uh, cost. Well, clearly that graph is a straight line. Okay. Um, now sometimes my hand's a little bit shaky, right? But that's supposed to be a straight line. All right. So uh, that graph is a, is a straight line. And uh, let's see if we can answer some questions about that particular uh, linear function. All right. So first thing we want to do is find the slope. Okay. So what's the slope of that? Um, linear function. That should be pretty easy to do, right? Okay. Sometimes that's easier said than done. But in this picture, it's pretty easy to do, right? Because remember, what does slope mean? It means what? The change in the y when x what? Increases by 1, right. Okay. So you really have to uh, uh, always remember that basic interpretation of the slope because it's going to come up over and over and over again. Uh, well, let's see. Can we read this off of the... Can we read this off of the graph? Let's see. We're starting with a y-intercept of 25, right? And when we increase x by 1, it looks like y is going up by, is that making sense there? 25? Yeah, I think my dots are a little bit um, not uh, careful there. But uh, uh, that's what it's supposed to be, all right? So uh, uh, when x increases by 1, the y value there is changing by uh, 25 each time, right? Okay. Is that what that looks like? If I plotted this crazy, when x increases by, y. yeah, okay. So uh, the y val, uh, uh, the y there is changing by uh, 25. All right. So uh, 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 that's easy there, uh, just to read off the. That's easy there just to read off the slope. So what is that slope telling us? Okay, Of course, it's telling us um, uh, 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 how the y value is increasing, right, when the um, x uh, uh, increases by 1, right, how the y value is changing when the x increases by 1. In the context of this problem, what does that mean to us? If we're the customer, what is that slope really telling us? Right, so there's one way of uh, uh, there's one way of uh, 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 explaining that, Arthur. Okay, so you could say what uh, when the um, uh, amount of um, uh, data used increases by one, right? One watt, by the way, there, Arthur. Yeah, right. One gigabyte there, right? Okay. What the? So what else is changing here? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so the monthly uh, uh, cost, right, is is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing, because that's positive slope, right? So the monthly cost increases by um, how much there? What was the slope? 25, right, okay. So the monthly cost increases by um, 25. That's kind of a long-winded way of, of, uh, of explaining that. Can you think of a shorter uh, description of that slope, what that slope is telling you? Shorter, okay. Shorter description of the practical meaning of the slope. What is that slope telling us in practice? As a customer, what does that slope mean to us? I mean, it means this, okay? That is correct. Uh, that's what it's telling us. But it, can you say that in a little bit uh, simpler way? That's probably not how you would explain that. What now? Yeah, right. That's right. So uh, the cost is $25 per gigabyte, right? Okay, that's probably what you would, uh, uh, how you would explain, right? Okay. <laughs> Or something like maybe each gigabyte cost twenty-five dollars, right? Oh. 
says the same thing. Of course, what was the what was the y intercept there? 25, right, okay, so we saw there that the y-intercept there is uh, 25. Can you, uh, uh, what, what's that y-intercept mean there? What's the, what's the practical significance of the, the y-intercept in this situation? Yeah, well, so, sort of the initial cost, but there's some other way you can describe what that. Uh, see, think about that. That's the that's the output that um, that's the output that matches the input zero, right? But the input zero here would be, uh, 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 that would be no gigabytes used. So what's that? The activation cost. Yeah, it's something like an activation cost, right? Okay, right, okay. Uh, each month you're going to have to pay $25, right? Okay, uh, whether you use any uh, 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 cellular data or not, right? Okay, so there's this uh, fee of, uh, 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 this uh, flat fee, right, of $25, right? Okay, uh, whether you use... Uh, uh, whether you use any cellular data or not, right? And then you have to pay for the cellular data on top of that, right? Not sure how a uh, not sure how a uh, cell phone manager would uh, cell phone store salesman would uh, explain this, right? Any y'all work at cell phone stores? So something like there's a monthly fee of $25, right? And then each gigabyte costs uh, uh, $25 as well, okay? Right? Now, here's the last uh, thing we want to do, okay? Um, let's see if we can write down a formula for this uh, linear function, all right? So I want to write down a formula for that linear function, so it's a linear function, right? So that's a very important clue, the fact that that's a linear function, right? Because you know the formula can be written like this, correct? And all you have to do is fill in the coefficients here, the m and the b. But we already wrote those down, right? We already discovered those. What was the m? 25, right? And the y-intercept there was? 25 also, okay? So very easy to write down this, uh, very easy to write down this formula, right? Once you know the y-intercept and uh, you know the slope, okay, then very simple, right, to write down the formula for the line. So it's very easy, usually, to convert uh, linear functions to formulas, okay, because they have very simple formulas, right? But there are some things you have to fill in, right, okay? So there are some things you have to insert into the formula, but usually those things are fairly straightforward to discover. Not maybe so easy as in this example, but we'll see how we can uh, find uh, those values that we need to fill into a, a formula for a uh, formula for a uh, linear function. All right, let me. Uh, I got one more example from this notes, but I'm going to save it. We'll save it as a warm up for. Next time, let's switch to the, just so uh, uh, we can uh, uh, cover uh, as much new material as possible here for your homeworks, all right, on, um, uh, 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 that's due uh, next time, all right. So um, here's just another linear example uh, 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 function, all right. So um, here's one for you business majors. So uh, uh, businesses have multiple options that they can use for depreciating equipment for tax purposes. See, businesses have to pay property taxes, and that will include uh, uh, capital equipment that is in their position, they, uh, in their possession each year. They have to pay tax on that, all right? 
Um, so, uh, so of course, it's to their advantage to uh, correctly uh, uh, state what the value of that equipment is, right? Okay. Um, they don't want to always uh, uh, state the value of that equipment as the original uh, price of the equipment because equipment uh, 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 wears out, right? It loses value over time, okay? So if it's in the uh, business's interest, right, to make sure that over time they depreciate the value of that equipment for tax purposes. They lower its value, okay? Um, and there are many ways that, uh, uh, that there are many options they have uh, that they're allowed uh, 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 by the government for depreciating the value of uh, capital equipment. And one of them is called linear depreciation. This is one that's uh, very easy to understand. Okay, And um, so here's an example of a, a linear depreciation function. All right, here the Y is going to be the depreciated value of a tractor that some business owns. Okay, this is in thousands of dollars, and then the T here is the elapsed years after the tractor is purchased. Okay, so that clearly is, of course, what sort of function? Linear, Linear function, right? So one option businesses have to depreciate uh, capital equipment like tractors. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, using a linear function to uh, 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 calculate uh, uh, the current uh, value of that um, uh, piece of equipment. All right. So in this example, here's the linear function that we use to calculate the value of this uh, tractor after a given number of uh, years after it's been purchased. Right. So um, of course, it's easy here to uh, calculate g of three. Right. The formula is really easy to use. And that's one reason why businesses will use linear depreciation formulas like this one is because they're so easy to calculate, right? So g of 3 there is going to be um, 150 minus 25 times 3, which is um, 150 minus 75, of course, which is 75, right? Okay, so it's easy to compute g of 3. Uh, what does g of 3 mean, though? So what's the 75 telling you? So what have we just computed here? What's the purpose of that number? What does that number even mean to us? Yeah, so it involves value and years after purchase, right? So those two things are going to be in our, in our ex explanation of the meaning. But how do we combine those things, right, to write down the proper explanation here? Perfect, right? Okay. The va yeah. So the value is right. Uh, uh, what did you say, Emiliano? There. Uh, it's seventy-five thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not seventy-five dollars. That's a little bit low for a tractor, right? Okay. So they'd probably get in trouble if they tried to put that as the value of the tractor on their tax return. Okay. The value is uh, seventy-five thousand after. Three years, right? Okay, or three years after uh, purchase. Okay, that's just what G of three means, right? So uh, this is one thing that y'all were sometimes struggling with, and I knew it was going to be this way on the test, right? Is well, you didn't have much trouble evaluating the function notation. That's pretty easy, right? So I think everyone could compute that uh, g of 3 here is 75. But then explaining its meaning, I know that sometimes you're uncomfortable with that. But that's really important that you understand what that uh, uh, notation actually means in practice. Okay? Uh, the, math, the numbers without meaning are not um, uh, uh, much use to us, right? Okay? Uh, we have to know what the numbers are telling us, right, uh, if we're going to apply our uh, math knowledge in practical situations. What is the slope here? That's pretty easy to uh, 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 read off. Okay, so what's the slope? That value that we often denote by m. We almost always use the letter m to denote the slope. So what is the slope here? See, we've got the formula, so we can read the slope off, right? What's the slope? Negative 25, perfect, right. It's minus 25, right, okay. So the slope there is uh, minus 25. And so, all right, so here's the tricky part, right? What does the minus 25 mean, okay? So what is its practical significance to us? 
So it's look, it's it's sort of uh, uh, just uh, abstract significance is that's how the y is changing when uh, the input here, which is t, increases by one, right? So minus twenty five is how y is changing when t increases by one, right? Okay. That's kind of just the, uh, again, the abstract, generic uh, uh, interpretation of slope. But in this context, what does that mean? How the output is changing when the uh, uh, input increases by 1. In this situation, what does that mean? What? That's right, yeah, okay. So you said after every year, the tractor loses 25,000 in value. Now, in you probably wouldn't uh, uh, to your friend say after every year, each year, right? You may say something like that, or per year, correct? Okay, uh, perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so um, uh, the tractor loses, uh, 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 or the tractor's value um, goes down or decreases, right? Um, by uh, twenty-five thousand uh, uh, per year. Or each year. What's the y-intercept here? So again, that we can read off, right? What's the y-intercept? 150, right. Okay. So we can see there that the b-value there, same as the uh, 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 y-intercept there, is uh, 150. What is that telling us? That's the initial value of that tractor, right? That's the starting value of that tractor. Because remember, y-intercept, the y-intercept for a function always corresponds to an input of zero. Input of zero here would be no elapsed years, right? Zero elapsed years after purchase. Well, zero elapsed years after purchase means when it was purchased, right? Okay. So the initial uh, 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 value of the tractor was 150,000. That's apparently what we paid, right, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, tractor. Finally, one more thing here on this example. We haven't talked too much so far about x-intercepts. We haven't talked too much uh, so far about x-intercepts, but graphs also cross the x-axis sometimes. Not always, but graphs also cross the x-axis sometimes. And um, those numbers are uh, 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 the place where a, a, a graph crosses the x-axis. That sometimes is important to us. It often has practical significance in a problem. It does in this problem for sure. Okay. So here, uh, what you're asked to do is find the x-intercept where that graph, we don't even see the graph, right? So we don't even have a picture of the graph. But if we did have a picture of the graph, where that graph would cross the x-axis, how would we find the x-intercept now, where the graph crosses the x-axis? We can't look at the picture because we don't have a graph here, right? But from the formula, how can we find the x-intercept? Well, let's think backwards here. How do we find the y-intercept? Plug in what, yeah? For, for the input, right, OK? Uh, right, so to find the x-intercept, actually, I should say t-intercept here because the input is t. But to find, in general, to find the uh, x-intercept, you plug in 0 for the output, OK? So to find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for the input. To find the x-intercept, you plug in 0 for y, or the output. Well, let's do that in this formula, then. So see, there's our formula, right? Where's our formula? Here's our formula. And so I'm going to plug 0 in for y. And that leads me to an equation now that I have to solve. Oh, so see, finding x-intercepts is um, not quite as straightforward as finding y-intercepts, because uh, when you plug 0 in for the output in a formula, you get an equation that you have to solve. So often to find x-intercepts, you have to solve equations. 
Well, sometimes that's easy and sometimes that's not so easy, right? Okay, uh, let's see. But this one I think we can solve pretty easily, right? How would you solve that equation? We want to solve it for t. So what would you do first there? Subtract 150 from both sides. Yeah, that's what I would probably do too. So subtract 150 from both sides. That's the same as moving the 150 to the left-hand side. So you get minus 25t is minus 150. And now what? Divide both sides by minus 25. Sure, right. Okay. So not so bad to solve this. And we get what? That t is equal to 6, right. Okay. So our x-intercept there is, um, we get a nice value there for the x-intercept. It turns out to be uh, 6. What does that mean to us? So think about what we did, okay? Um, we set the output to what? Zero. zero. So when you set the output to zero, the output corresponds to what? The, the value of the tractor, right? Okay. That's right. So the value of the tractor will be zero after, after six years, right? Okay. So for tax purposes, now actually the tractor, if it's working, will probably always have some value, right? But for tax purposes, after six years, uh, the business can write off this tractor, okay? Uh, this tractor has no value for tax purposes after six years, right? So the business definitely wants to know that, right? Because they don't have to pay taxes on the tractor after six years, okay? So they definitely want, don't want to pay taxes, right, um, after six years. All right, I want to show you one more thing quickly before we stop, okay? Um, and, and this has to do with just finding the slope of a line. So we've talked about slope a lot today. So, suppose, though, that you're given a linear function like this. So you've got the graph, okay? You've got the graph, and you're asked to determine the slope, okay? Now, you know a little bit about the graph because... Um, uh, you know a couple of points that the graph goes through, all right? So this graph goes through minus 2, minus 3. That's one point on the line. And then uh, 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 in this example, another point on the line is 4, 2. And we want to compute what is the slope, okay? Well, you can see because the line is going up from left to right, correct? Um, you can see that the slope is positive. So whatever number we get here for the slope, we know it's going to be positive, correct? So uh, so we know that much, but there are lots of positive numbers, right? So uh, I need to narrow that down a little bit because uh, that's not a, a, you know, a precise enough answer. So we want to actually calculate exactly what that positive uh, number is for the slope. Now, if you think about the basic interpretation of the slope, it's kind of hard to figure out what the slope is from the um, graph. Because remember, slope means the um, it's the change in y, right? when x increases by 1. <laughs> but if you try to read off of here what's happening to the y when x increases by 1, it's really hard to see from the graph. Okay, uh, It's really hard to uh, uh, you know, look very precisely there and um, figure out what's happening to y when x increases by 1. You don't get a nice even number, right, uh, for the slope. So, uh, so here we need another way of computing um, the value of the slope. And um, it's easy, okay? Um, because all you have to do uh, uh, to figure out what's happening when x increases by 1 is between these two points, figure out what the total change in the x is, okay? Between these two points. It's not going to be 1, right? But, um, but let's see, what is it between those two uh, points, the change in x. Well, let's see, we start at minus 2, right? 
and we're going to 4. On the x-axis, we're going to 4. Did I draw that in the right place? Yeah. On the x-axis, we're going to 4. So that means the change in x is how much there? 6, right. Okay. You just count that off, right? The change in x is between these two points is 6. By the way, if you don't want to count it off, you can also calculate it just by taking the difference in the two x coordinates. So take 4 and subtract the minus 2, and that also gives you positive 6. Positive 6. Minus a minus 2 is plus 2, right? So you get there 6. Now, uh, uh, that's the change in the x. What was the change in the y? Well, let's see. We went from minus 3 up to what? 2, right? So that's a change of 5, right? You can just count, right? Okay. That's a change of positive 5. We want to make sure we get the sign right. But that's a change of um, positive 5. So the change in y there is um, 5, which we also could have calculated by taking the difference in the y coordinates. Takes 2 minus a minus 3, and that gives you positive 5. Okay, So if you didn't want to count that off from here to here, just take the difference in the two y coordinates and you get positive 5. Now, to calculate the slope then, all you have to do to calculate the slope, that is the change in y when x increases by 1, by 1, all you have to do is take the change in the y and divide it by the change in the x. So let's see, um, the change in the y there was how much? For this line, 5, right? And the change in the x is 6. There is the slope. It's 5 6 So you get a fractional value there, 5 6 That is positive, though, so that's good. Okay, at least it didn't come out negative. So here's a formula now that you can use to uh, uh, calculate the slope of a line even when you don't know exactly what's happening to the output when x increases by 1. See here, we knew uh, what happened when x increases by 6, but we didn't know exactly from the graph what was happening when x increased by 1. But that's OK. We can still use that change in x to calculate the slope. So here is the, this is the famous slope formula, all right? That's the uh, formula that we use to find the slope of a line. You do have to know, however, what? <laughs> Two points on the line, okay? So you cannot calculate the slope of a line without having some information about the line, right? Okay? And um, in this formula, you need to know two points on the line. That's it, okay? You only need two points because any two points, uh, uh, there's only one line that goes through any two points. So, um, uh, so the slope is determined by any two points on the line. Um, uh, so uh, there's a, lots of ways of expressing this slope formula. I use change in y over change in x. Here's another way of writing this, of expressing this slope formula. The change in y is sometimes called the rise. You can see why it's called the rise, right? Because that's the vertical rise between these two points on the line. And the change in x is sometimes called the run uh, of the line. So another way we uh, remember the slope formula is saying rise over run. Uh, that means change in y over change in x. And to compute the change in y, take the difference in the y coordinates. So this means the difference in the y coordinates for two points on the line. And then divide that by the difference in the x coordinates for two points on the line. And then again, that is a way to compute the slope. All right. So there's our formula for finding the slope, or a formula for finding the slope. But what do you have to know? This is important. Two points on the line, right? You have to know two points on the line, uh, obviously, there to use that formula. OK, let's stop there. I'm going to stop notes there. And I'm going to say just a couple of words about the test. And then um, we'll do our activity after a, a short break here. Let's see if I've got my. Ah. All right. 
So I, I, uh, as part of your activity here after class, I mean after the lecture today, um, I need you to um, uh, do something for me. So I'm going to give you an index card. You're going to put your name on this index card, okay, and you're going to give this back to me because I'm going to read these tomorrow. Um, so as part of our strategy for improving our test number two grade, okay, I need for you to write down two things, right, two actions that you are going to take between uh, now and test number two, which is actually coming up pretty quickly. You'll have to, I forgot, I didn't look at the syllabus to see exactly where the date is, all right. Two actions that uh, in light of what happened on test number one, okay, uh, two actions that um, you might take to help you with test number two, okay? If you're here, we'll do better. Uh, yeah. If I'm here? Yeah. You know, we had a visitor last time. That's right, yeah, okay. The lady. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. All right, now, but I want to say something a little bit about what, what the things that you write down on the card. I only need two things, okay? Okay. Um, but this is a, 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 a this a, a, a system I'm going to tell you is a famous a system for setting goals. Okay, but our goals are very specific because we are just interested in uh, um, uh, uh, improving our grade on test number two, right? But you can use this goal setting technique for long term goals as well. All right. So uh, when you're setting goals uh, in general, you need to make sure that the goals are dated. That means that you have a a timeline, right? A deadline of when you're going to finish the goal, right? Well, for our goal, that's for uh, before test number two, right? Okay. And you have to write something down, this is important, that is achievable. So you cannot write down a very lofty goal, right? Okay. <coughs> that you know you're not going to do. So uh, in, in improving gra your grade on test number two, don't say, I'm going to study for three hours my college algebra every night, right, okay, because that's not going to happen. You and I both know that's not going to happen, right? So you have to write something that is, um, you know, that you can do, right, okay? And then a third there, uh, something personal. So think about what happened to you on the test, right, and where you think things uh, uh, did not go well for whatever reason, base your actions on that. You want to write down something that's positive. So don't say, I'm not going to do something. Like, I'm not going to, um, you know, be on Instagram so much, okay? Don't express it like that. Say something that you are going to do. And then it's something has got to be specific. So you have to, you can't be a vague or something that is uh, very clear. So I'm going to give you an example because here is something that everyone needs to do, okay, uh, quickly. So I'm going to give you one of these goals, but I, but uh, even though um, usually we want our goals to be personal, something you make up yourself, but I'm going to give you one, all right, because everyone needs to do this. Uh, well, almost everyone. Um, if you had a really high score, though, on the test, then you would w want to talk about things that you're going to continue to do, all right, uh, before that you think worked for test one, you're going to continue to do for test two, right? But if you didn't make a so great a score, then it's probably something that you didn't do right, that you, sh that you now think, oh, I should have done that, right? Um, but here's one that everyone should do. Uh, uh, rework the problems you missed on test number one. Rework the problems on test number one. Only use the answer key as a last resort. So the answers are posted for test number one. They're in Blackboard uh, on the test answers section. The answers are all posted. But don't look at that until you've reworked the test, okay? The problems that you missed, right? Uh, try working those first before you look at the answer key. You may have to get help. So if you have to get help with the test, reworking the test, do that. So you can come to me if you want, or you can go to the math center, but fix those mistakes, okay? This you need to do quickly, all right? So I would say do this within a week, right? So see, we want something, a goal that's dated. So I would say within a week, because otherwise you're going to start forgetting what you did on the test, right? So do that immediately, all right? So there's a goal you can all write down, all right? Uh, 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 and now I need another 
goal, something else you're going to do that you did not do or you did not do well for that you think for test number one. If you did not work that sample test carefully, that would be a good place to start. Okay. Um, uh, if, uh, uh, but for some of you who did well, you might say, I'm going to continue um, making sure I come to every class, right? Or I'm going to continue uh, uh, working hard to have a high score on my homework, right? Something that you think helped you, write that down as your goal, something you're going to continue to do, okay? So let's take just a, three or four minutes to write something down. Everyone's got to write something down because I'm going to take these up and I'm going to read them and comment them on them, right? Okay? Um, tomorrow. Yeah, you need to put your name on I need to have your name so that I can uh, have an idea of what you think would have uh, helped you. But this is an action you can take, right, okay, uh, that, um, that you think would have helped. Spend more time, just more time preparing for the test. I didn't spend enough time preparing for the test. Things like that, right, okay. But that first goal, really important. That's true not just for this class, but for every class that you're taking tests in, okay? You need to always rework your tests. So when you've written down a goal, then you can go get a drink of water or something, and we'll start again about 10 minutes We'll start again about 10 minutes until the hour, okay, and uh, work on some on our activity for today. I don't think we'll get through with it, but that's fine.